Hello, today we're talking about SecureX. I'm Ben Greenbaum from Cisco Security, and this is a SecureX Threat Intelligence speed run. We're about to add 10 completely free threat intelligence resources into SecureX so that we could leverage their data collections and their knowledge in every investigation we do from now on. And we're going to do it all in under three, nope, under two and a half minutes. We've improved third-party integration substantially, easing the burden and lowering the barriers to integrating your favorite non-Cisco products and services into SecureX. I'm going to show you a before and an after comparison, but the configuration itself will be done in two and a half minutes or less. I'm that confident and no cheating. Okay, not much cheating. I will not cheat by adding any video editing trickery. You are along for the full ride here, I promise. I will cheat by already having the API keys, and probably so do you for at least some of these. So there's no point in making you watch me wait for verification emails and click the links and so on. But the configuration portion of the video is complete and is untouched. But to start with, let's look at SecureX and the integrations I already have. In this SecureX account, I have configured Cisco Secure Endpoint, the orchestration module, and Cisco Threat Grid, as well as the four default threat intelligence modules that come with SecureX. Now, I've got a casebook. Let's look at this casebook. It's got eight different observables in it, and let's just jump right into an investigation of these observables. And Threat Response is asking each of those seven modules what it knows and what it can do about each of those eight observables gathers all the information together on these eight observables, including their verdicts and dispositions. Zero related observables were returned, one indicator comes back, and three modules participated, Talos, AMP Global Intelligence, and AMP File Reputation. Clicking the pivot menus on graph nodes gives me the options that I have to do further research or take action against these items. So I can look up a file in AMP or Threat Grid, I can block it in AMP, I can look up URLs, in Cisco Secure Endpoint or AMP, uh, in Talos Intelligence, in Threat Grid, and I can take many of the same actions with IP addresses as well. In all cases, limited to those capabilities offered by the modules that I have. So let's add some more threat intelligence into this mix. Many of these require API keys, but they're all free and quick and easy to register for at the provider's websites. Some of them don't even require that. The clock starts now. Ready, set, go. So first off, API void, which will simultaneously check against multiple reputation lists for different observable types. Next up is the abuse IP database, an IP reputation checker based on crowdsourced user reports. And Cybercrime Tracker, a botnet and command and control tracker which finds and reports crimeware administrative panels. No API key even required for this one. Next up, the Farsight DNS database. This is passive DNS data gathered from a global sensor array. Followed by Google Safe Browsing, access to Google's own list of unsafe URLs. It's time for Pulse Dive, a cloud based community threat intelligence platform. And Shodan, crawler-based Internet of Things intelligence. No API key required. Threat Score, another one that requires no API. Intel on almost 50 million observables seen in billions of events. URL scan.io, URL intelligence from a free public URL sandbox and the analyses done as a result. And then last but not least is Virus Total. This was the first internally hosted third-party threat intelligence integration available in SecureX. It's been available since day one, and it provides malware intelligence on many different kinds of observables from user submissions. 
And we're now done. And as you can see, that took less than two and a half minutes. The title of the video said three minutes. I got cocky and said under two and a half minutes and I just barely made it. But now all of these are added. You saw how quick that was. And now let's go back to our initial investigation and see what it looks like now. You can already see a lot more information is coming in than we got last time. Even as you look across this metrics bar, we've still got our initial eight investigated items, but we've also got 20 related items compared to zero. We've got a lot more observables that have come back from these threat intelligence sources as being in some way related to something that we investigated. Likewise, we now also have 31 indicators that have come back, giving us more context and threat intelligence about the items in our investigation. And of course, we've got results from many more modules as well, 11 modules all told, contributing intelligence directly into this investigation. If you look at the graph, you'll see there's a lot more going on in here as well. We have many of these related items displayed as nodes in the graph, either individually or combined. And as well, we can take more actions than we could previously take. I'm going to open the pivot menu on an IP address here. And we see that I've got the option to look this IP up in various places. I can even search for it in Shodan. We also see in the details panel on the right that I've got verdicts from abuse IP database and from threat score. Similarly, if I select a URL, I get the initial verdict that I already got from Talos Intelligence previously, but I get additional items in the pivot menu, the ability to search for this URL across multiple additional sources, and even to feed it to URL scan to get an analysis done on it immediately. So that was a pretty quick high-level overview of the differences between the two investigations. But the intent of this entire video is to be quick, to show you the speed at which this can all be accomplished. These modules will now be here every time I do an investigation from here on in. And the point is to show you the incredible return on your investment of that small amount of time. Due to the ease with which you can now add multiple powerful threat intelligence providers, as well as other third-party commercial or open source tools into SecureX to have with you at all times as you're doing these investigations, and this wasn't even the full list of our third-party ecosystem. This was just a small subsample of 10 of the free threat intelligence sources alone. We're adding more to this ecosystem all the time. Check back in the SecureX modules, check the release notes, follow this video series for more updates, and I'm going to leave you with some additional resources as well. First off is the SecureX Academy, a relatively new addition at this point. Learn SecureX.Cisco.com where you can get a curated, guided series of lessons on all things SecureX. Specifically about the third-party ecosystem around SecureX, you can go to cs.co slash CSTA, Cisco Security Technical Alliance, and you can learn about the integrations that are available not just with SecureX, but with various third-party products and services and the entirety of the Cisco security portfolio. And lastly, you can go to cs.co slash securex underscore third underscore party underscore videos spelled and spaced exactly as you see it on your screen with the underscores in between. And that will let you see the playlist that this video is a part of about all of the third party integrations and the configurations and the benefits and so on that we've documented in these videos here. So in closing, I want to thank you very much for your attention and your interest in SecureX and in the third-party ecosystem. Hopefully you are now going to go log into SecureX for yourself and start configuring several of these third-party threat intelligence sources that you can add into SecureX at absolutely no charge at all. Take care and enjoy using SecureX and securing your environments better together.